Hi everyone, my name is Rich Walter. I'm one of the curators here at the Musical Instrument Museum. And we're just here because we were anxious to share some more information from our galleries. We're up here in the Europe Gallery right now in front of our Ireland exhibit, which has recently been updated and improved. We're really excited about that as well. Irish music, uh, as all the music of the world is so fascinating, but one of the things I, I love about Irish traditional music is you know, it's emblematic, obviously, of, of Ireland, but it's been embraced all over the world, and it's really turned into a worldwide phenomenon. And so lots of people recognize it, lots of people play it, and just wanted to share a couple highlights from our exhibit because we've had some recent acquisitions. We're really pleased for those. Um, one of the most probably important instruments in Irish music is the fiddle or the violin. And not long ago, we were really uh, very pleased to find this example from a luthier, an instrument maker from Dublin named Thomas Perry. And this is from the 1760s. He was one of Ireland's uh, greatest violin makers. And so it's one thing to have just, uh, you know, a violin is important to share as far as an important instrument in Irish music, but it's really special to have uh, an Irish made violin of such quality and, and historical depth. So that's been an exciting addition. The story of, of violin playing and its importance, uh, there are players, of course, Ireland has sent immigrants to the United States. It's such an important story. And fiddlers like James Morrison and Michael Coleman emigrated to the States where then they made recordings of their fiddling uh, Sligo style fiddling and then those recordings went back over the ocean and influenced a whole new generation of Irish musicians still there and so there's this whole cycle of people moving around the world taking their music with them making recordings sharing it back and and some of these really significant fiddlers are, are a big part of that engine of, of what really drove uh, a renewed interest in the 1920s with some of this great traditional music. Another instrument uh, that we're really, really excited about, this is a set of Illin pipes um, by a maker named Dennis Crowley. And Dennis and his brother Tig uh, are among the most important 20th century, century makers of Illin pipes. Illin is Gaelic for elbow. So basically, uh, when you think of, say, a Scottish Highland bagpipe with those tall, majestic pipes uh, up behind, uh, player and you're inflating the bag with your breath, these are inflated with your elbow. So there's a, a bellows that you would hold under your right arm and that inflates this bag that you would hold under your left arm. And then you have this set of drone pipes called regulators and those also have keys on them. And so each of those drone pipes uh, have keys that allow a player to play notes and even chords in some cases. And then the melody, the primary melody is played on this called the chanter. So you've got all these different components, really distinctive playing style and a fascinating instrument in the way it's used and made. And we're uh, very pleased to have this great example from Dennis Crowley from 1950, and this one's all original. So all the original parts are as they would have come from the maker, which is pretty unusual because all of these parts can also be disassembled. Uh, the chanters can be replaced and so on and so forth. So to have an original set of Crowley pipes, uh, it's just a, a fantastic addition to our Ireland exhibit here. And if you want an example of high level playing, look up Seamus Ennis, uh, who was a historically important player earlier in the 20th century, or today a man named Paddy Keenan, who's really one of the, the world's greatest pipers today playing this, this instrument. Very complicated and really amazing sound. Uh, and the last one I wanna really just call attention to, this is another recent acquisition. This is a tenor banjo from Emerald Banjos, who are a contemporary maker. Uh, the story of the banjo in Ireland is, is sort of interesting as well. There were folks like Mike Flanagan, the Flanagan brothers early on, who used it when it wasn't so popular or so integral. And then Barney McKenna of the Dubliners uh, helped popularize it with, with that wonderful group. And it's since that time really become a mainstay in Irish traditional music. It is tuned 
these four strings are tuned an octave below a violin. So it's uh, G, D, A, and E, like a violin, but an octave lower. And so you can play uh, melodies with the similar kind of characteristic ornamentation. And it's really turned into a, a staple in Irish music. And this particular one, in addition to being a beautiful custom-built instrument, happens to have been the personal instrument of a man named Noel Birmingham. So he's a, a great West Clare player today. And not only is this a, a beautiful instrument, it was the personal instrument of a great player. And uh, he has a recent album called When the Tide Is Out. And so you can come to Mim and see that instrument, but frankly, you can hear that instrument on his album, When the Tide is Out, because that was his player. Uh, so it's really, really neat. You know, the whole exhibit here for Ireland, we have a fiddle from the mid 18th century, a flute from the 19th century, these Ellen pipes from the 20th century, and a, a banjo here from the 21st century. So we have centuries of instruments represented. Uh, and much more certainly to see when, when you're able to come back and check it out in person. But in the meantime, we're wishing you well from MIM and wanted to share a few highlights from our Ireland exhibit. Thanks.